Well, we've got our new Stanley Cup celebration. Finally, after like a decade of it not being in NHL video games, we can now choose who we're going to pass the cup to in franchise mode. We've also got a ton of other things we've got to look at from the presentation deep dive. So as always, we'll break it down frame by frame and see what we can see. Guys, make sure you subscribe as I'm closing in on 40,000 subscribers. I thank you everyone that has already done so. NHL 23 is going to be a big year. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. All right, let's get into it. Welcome to the NHL 23 presentation deep dive let's start by talking through with the all-new stanley cup celebration we've really upped our game when it comes to the stanley cup celebration in previous years we've had a non-interactive sequence and that's worked pretty well but this year we wanted to give the players some agency that's fully interactive one of the biggest wish fulfillment moments is that tradition in the real NHL of who gets the cup next. We're going to populate the list of names based on approximately 65 different stories that we're tracking under the hood. All right, so first up is the aforementioned new interactive Stanley Cup celebration. So now you're getting something that's completely new in terms of the motion capture, as well as the ability to choose who you're going to hand the cup off to. In the grand scheme of things, this is a pretty small addition to the game, but for all of my franchise grinders out there that like to make it as realistic as possible this is a really cool feature to put in the game like there's no shot i'm not handing the cup to darren helm from the veteran that has never won the stanley cup to the assistant captain that also leads the team in goals when the user selects a player we hear through the commentary we justify that decision well here was a key contributor tied for most goals on the team on route to a stanley cup win right well i was just most impressed with how he played game to game and then at some point in the playoffs i'm like he's scoring all the time so again, another nice touch added to the cinematics where Ray and Sabolski are both going to acknowledge the players that actually performed really well, especially when you select them who they hand the cup off to. Again, I think this is a nice touch, nothing huge added to the game, but something that was sorely missed in all of the last like 15 NHLs in terms of when you actually win the cup. It feels a little bit more impactful when you win a cup in franchise mode. It looks awesome. Obviously, we've completely re -mo the entire sequence, but we've also added the effects, confetti falling from the roof, and of course, like the sparklers that are firing in the background, and it all looks tremendous. After the Stanley Cup has been won, we have this moment where, and this is true, true wish fulfillment, where you finally get to see your name etched on the Stanley Cup. Whatever the player- EA just absolutely buried the Toronto Maple Leafs chances at winning a cup this year. Oh, good Lord. Uh, pack it in, Leafs fans. There's always next year. Go. Your list of the team is, you're ultimately going to see that name etched in the Stanley Cup, and it's a really cool sequence. It's a total revamp of one of the greatest moments inside of our game. All right, again, from a franchise mode perspective, it's actually cool we get some sort of feature or recognition for winning the cup as opposed to just this little tile in franchise mode that says congratulations, the, ch the team champion, whatever. I think it's pretty sweet. Also, shout out to my man Joe NHL for getting on the Stanley Cup. That's pretty sweet. Good for Joe. Moments inside of our game. We decided to completely revamp this year. As soon as you score a hat trick goal, we see from a wide shot just a raining down of an incredible amount of hats, but it's so awesome. We were like, let's let's ship with that. Inside of Eshel World of Chell, we give users the ability to kind of create their own tradition. You can have teddy bears, you can have alien plushies, you can have fish plastic rats and roses. All right, again, another kind of gimmicky thing that for whatever reason wasn't in the game, but uh, again, nice little atmosphere addition to be able to customize what your fans are going to throw on the ice. How the fish thing, uh, super weird, but again, this isn't a bad thing. It's just something that they removed from the game for a while, but it is nice to have it back. I will say this. I don't think any of this is going to be able to be customized in Hockey Ultimate Team. That would be sick, but from my understanding, it looks like World of Chell and Franchise Mode. So. The work we did in Game Day Atmosphere really changes the entire game. We did a total overhaul of the crowd audio this year. When something happens on the ice, you'll hear it from the crowd. The home team gets a penalty. The, the home team is going to get on the referee and start booing them. At first, it'll be subtle, but as that penalty differential kind of grows, as do the boos. If you're playing... Hey, we might not have cross markets, but we've got Shesterkin hitting the gritty in NHL 23. A game where you come back, perhaps you win an OT, you're going to get a completely different animation that is properly representative of how hyped 
the home team is. All right, again, so something that definitely needed to be touched up in the NHL video game, and this might actually apply to online play as well, but again, the crowd being a little bit more interactive and not being dead silent when, you know, you're in a tight game or an overtime is a definite plus but again it is very minuscule in terms of year over year improvements i will say like i said that this does add a lot more atmosphere improvements when you're playing offline specifically or in franchise mode or even be a pro if this carries over so the intros were in need of some maintenance we knew we wanted to add some more emotion if you're familiar with what we call on ice projections these big animated graphics that get projected onto the ice during the pregame We've added them this year, and it's not just for authentic teams, but it's also for World of Chell and, and Eshel. You actually see the fans waving around these awesome light sticks, and those are also fully customizable. Inside of World of Chell and Eshel, users can change their colors, and it really adds to this incredible atmosphere. All right, now the on ice projections is actually pretty sick. Like I'm hoping that they stay as true as possible to the real thing. Like I think Montreal comes out and he does that that flame from center ice that kind of blows up all over the ice. Like that is awesome if they if they improve that and put them in, you know, authentically for all of their teams. The glow sticks, however, I'm not a huge fan of. I like the fact that in World of Shell and, and in franchise mode it looks like you can customize so that they're different colors and whatnot, but again, I think that it was Cool to try and stay to the realistic thing in every game. Like, I think the Sharks might be one of the only teams that do it, and they do it with wristbands. So, I'm not sure. I'm not a huge fan of the glow sticks, but, you know, it is what it is. We're finally adding the national anthems, and what you'll hear is the final few chords of the respective national anthem, and the players will be lined up at their respective blue lines. In World of Chell and Eshel, users will be able to select and customize whichever flag they want from all the major hockey nations. All right, I'll be real. The vibes I'm getting here are like, here are things that people liked back in the day that we removed from the game for no reason, and here we're adding them all back in. So quality of life and the experience that you get in game is definitely better than what it was but again i'm not really excited for things that used to be in the game that just should have been this whole time not going to complain that they're in the game now national anthems is cool it immediately makes me think of playing like nhl 06 i believe like gm mode where you get those last few seconds of it uh and then you know the announcer comes on and introduces the goalies and things like that and the fact that in world of Chell you can have like the customized one to your country that's pretty cool but yeah like this was in the game for so long that i'm not really super stoked about them adding it back in and then kind of flaunting it you know what i mean this year we've gone kind of fully 3D with AR and we continue using kind of that face-off moment to show the user meaningful stats but not slow the gameplay down. Really it's about the leaderboard giving you so many interesting deep insights. It can show things like top scorers on your team, top hitters, top assists, top points. All right, they're taking a second crack at augmented reality because this famously broke the game in NHL 22. I will say that I think it adds a really nice touch graphically to the game and these new leaderboard things that pop up i hope they're in hockey ultimate team because i do think that this is pretty cool like if you lined up in hockey ultimate team and it showed your opponent or your own like their stats that you've had with that with those cards i think this is a really cool feature again it doesn't state that if it's in hockey ultimate team or not i'd have to assume but even in franchise mode it is much better graphically to look at than you know maybe just like a random thing that pops up so this does look nice just please work it's all about the players and wanted to bring it home through getting the proper skin shading model and eye shading model. By aligning with the other sports titles, we have a massive amount of engineering power that we can access. We have the skin dual lobe shader, which allows us to adjust the light bouncing off the epidermis and hitting the oil on top of the skin so we can simulate sort of mild exertion without them looking too greasy, of course. And then we have the dual lobe shading on the eyes also. So it represents like the spec response of light that goes to the cornea and you get all this sense of light reflecting off the eyes. So we're getting more improvements because of the frostbite engine, the new lighting and shading techniques that they can now do to the player models simply looks incredible. Like there's no way to be upset or, or not impressed by what the player models now look like in game. It's close to lifelike that we've seen so far and it does look really, really nice.
really like metal things. People love shiny things. And this is us pushing our new shading models to the limit. We now have the Vegas Golden Knight helmets and we have a metal option for recolorable helmets so users can customize their equipment so they can have metal helmets or metal gloves. A fan favorite, you can pick a mirrored visor within the customization flow. Players look super cool. You can go all metallic and get your mirrored visor and go full Terminator on the ice. We're getting real. Again, another small improvement to the game, but adding to more customization options is never a bad thing. I'm not a huge fan of the Vegas Golden Knights or the LA Kings metal helmets, but a lot of people are, as well as the mirrored visor. That was one of the more funny community requested things. That being in the game is pretty sweet. However, I'm getting massive RoboCop vibes when they showed this off. Realistic visualizations of equipment and we're bringing them into the game. New unique geometry for goalie gear, player helmets, player skates, and player gloves. We've also done about 200 new vanity items and we've been updating our generic head pool to represent more diverse ethnic backgrounds. We have a, a large pool of women being represented, not just in our star heads, but in our generic head pool as well. We have ice resolution upgrades, so they really hold up on the 4K televisions. And we also have ice displacement that happens on the ice. So you get this realistic ice buildup that accumulates around the goalie and then around the sides of the boards, skate spray accumulation on boards. We felt that really helped bring out the personality of the ice. So more realistic representation of real life NHL equipment. Again, pretty big positive, as well as adding in more player profiles so that you can actually look a little bit different than you know most of the creative players have in the past. And some of the new vanity items are a nice improvement. The ice does look incredible, especially if you play on a really high res monitor. So again, I can state that that is really, really nice to look at because again, with the lighting, everything that Frostbite can do, this is where you're gonna see it shine the most. No pun intended. Now, all of these improvements are a welcome addition to the game. Saying that having these in the game is a bad thing is just simply not correct. However, this kind of just further hammers home the worry that there is really not much change year over year from NHL 22 to NHL 23. And more and more, I keep getting the sense that this is a holdover year for a hopefully break through game in NHL 24. Because if I'm being real, shout out to my man Kessa who pointed this out. NHL 10, they had almost the exact same things represented and highlighted as being big improvements to the game. So that is not a terrific look. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Make sure you subscribe for the most up-to-date news tips and info from NHL 23.